Hello, everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a RAID system built on a Seagate NAS device, the Black Arma model, supporting four hard disks. You also see how to recover data from the recycle bin of its shared default folder, how to enable this option, and how to bring your files back if the NAS server ever breaks down. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you'll be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Although NAS devices are a reliable type of storage, even they can get out of order sooner or later. If you can't access the data stored inside your NAS, you can try and extract the files with the help of specialized data recovery software. Usually, recovering data from a NAS means you take the hard disks out of the storage device, connect them to another computer, and then look for files with some data recovery tools. If files were deleted accidentally, you may find them in the recycle bin of the shared folder, and you'll see how to do that within a few minutes. For starters, let's explore how to build a RAID system on this specific NAS device. To create and modify the RAID type, open the Storage tab. If there are any foreign disks, initialize them by clicking this Claim Disk icon. After that, jump to the tab volumes. Initially, I had a span array consisting of one disk. To transform it into RAID 5, this volume has to be deleted. When I do that, the information on the disk is going to be erased. Click OK to confirm this action. If you have any important data on such disk, back up everything. In case of an error or failure, when you have already written the data but it got erased partially during the transformation, or when the NAS device suddenly removed all the data, the proper solution would be to recover all that information with the help of specialized software tools. And coming back, when everything is ready, click on the plus icon to add the disks. Select the disks you want to have in your disk array and click Next. Choose the RAID type. Click Next. Give the name and set the size. Then click Next and finish to complete the process. Now that the RAID configuration has been changed successfully, resyncing and formatting is in progress. It's quite a long process. If you want to get an estimated time required to complete it and check the progress, click on its status. To create a shared folder, you need to wait until the array building process is complete. Meanwhile, let's enable FTP network protocol to access the network drive. Open the network tab, services. To enable FTP, select this option and click Submit. Now go back to the Storage tab, select Shares, click on the plus button here to add elements, give the name of a shared folder and its description. Choose required network protocols, enable a recycle bin for this shared folder, and click Submit in the end. Now it's time to set access permissions. I'm going to enable public access to this directory by checking this box. And then click Submit to confirm this action. Alright, access control for this folder has been updated. To configure an ISCSI connection, open the Storage tab, choose ISCSI Manager, and enable the connection by checking the corresponding option. Then click Submit. Give the device name, its size, and select the volume to use. Set IQN. 
and submit it. Now ISCSI target is enabled. After that, connect to the device by FTP or ISCSI and write your data. If your NAS works alright and the network drive can be accessed, but you accidentally deleted some data from the disk, you can try to recover them from the recycle bin. Start by opening the storage tab, Recycle Bin Manager, browse to the folder from where the files were deleted and recover the ones you need. If Recycle Bin is disabled for this directory, you'll have to use a data recovery tool. I'll show it a bit later, but now let's explore how to enable the Recycle Bin feature for a shared folder. Open the Storage tab, jump to Shares, click on the Modify icon next to the shared folder, and enable the Recycle Bin service. Now all deleted files will be placed to the Recycle Bin, and you'll be able to recover them if they get removed accidentally. As the Recycle Bin was disabled in my case, it is impossible to recover data this way. For such scenarios, all you need is a reliable data recovery tool. If data is removed by accident, a hard disk is formatted, the disk ray is misconfigured, or in other scenarios involving loss of data, absence of access to the network drive or damage to a RAID system, Hetman RAID Recovery is always there to help you. Most NAS devices are running on Linux. All those various proprietary RAID management systems are based on two Linux RAID technologies – MDADM and LVM2. These systems provide more convenient interfaces to manage hard disks, while the main technology remains as close to pure Linux as possible. Hetman RAID Recovery supports both technologies, and in most cases it can build such RAID arrays automatically. This is a comprehensive solution for NAS data recovery to help you restore your files in a number of different scenarios. This program supports most popular file systems, including those used in NAS devices. So, take the disks out of the NAS device and connect them to a Windows computer. Don't forget to power your NAS off when reconnecting or disconnecting hard disks. When you take the disks out of the storage device, mark them to remember which disk slot each of them should go to. These markings will help you during the recovery process and you'll be able to put your storage system together properly when everything is ready. If the operating system of the computer to which you have connected the disks asks you to initialize or format them, don't do that, because it will make recovery a lot more complicated. Our utility features an advanced mechanism of automatic scanning designed to identify and recover NAS data in various scenarios of data loss. It will analyze the disks, read their service information, and rebuild the damaged RAID system. The RAID information is displayed below. Check if the program has read it correctly. Right-click on it and choose Open. Select the scan type and start the analysis. After the scan is over, disk contents will be displayed in the right part of the window. As you can see, the program has found all the files that have been written to the network drive. If you are looking for files that have been removed, you can identify them by red crosses. Select all the files you want to recover and click Recovery. Then select where you want to save them. And when the recovery process is over, you'll find all of the files in the folder you have just chosen. When scanning a RAID which had an operating system, the program shows you several disk arrays a mirror RAID containing the operating system and a RAID 5 containing the data. If you want to recover information from a system folder, scan the mirror RAID, which stores system files. To recover files accidentally removed from an ISCSI disk, run our data recovery tool.
Hetman Raid Recovery identifies this disk as a physical one, and it means you can easily scan it and recover the lost data. Right-click on the disk to open it, select the scan type and wait until it's over. As you can see, the utility has found all the files, both those that are on the disk and the ones that have been deleted. Now select the ones you want to restore and click Recovery. If the required information is available on the disk, Hetman RAID Recovery will collect damaged RAID arrays automatically. However, when a disk is damaged or service information is erased, the program may have difficulties with rebuilding the RAID automatically. Then, you can do it manually with the RAID constructor if you know the properties of this damaged array. Open the constructor, select Manual mode, and fill in all the information you know about this disk array. The RAID type, block order, and size. Add the disks it used to include, use the arrows to specify the order, and replace the missing disks with empty drives by clicking the plus button. Usually, if you give correct properties, the newly built RAID system has at least one partition. Expand it to check for the folders that you need. If the folders you are looking for are displayed, then you have built this RAID properly. When you specify all the properties you know, click Add and the array will appear in the Drive Manager. To have the array recovered, the last step is to scan it find the files you want to restore select them and recover to the folder you choose. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.